Good morning, Word of Life Church. Good morning. And good morning, Janet. Hello, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing well, except I don't really like being stuck in the house. I don't think any of us do at this point. The first no. week or two were great. Now it's like, ooh, I'm Not going so crazy. Exactly. Well, Kim and I are here to uh, spend a few minutes with our Word of Life family, face to face, sort of, and to share uh, some announcements with you all and keep you up to date on what's going on. Um, we don't have that much going on, obviously, in person, but we have many things going on online. So uh, we're going to talk about that. And um, Kim, how are you getting, uh, you're still working in the office, right? I am here right now working. See the chairs, the lovely blue chairs. Uh -huh. Carl's office door behind me. There Although you go. Although there's no Carl in there. He's working here at home. Kim is working there at the office. Uh, so if someone had a prayer request, what could they do, Kim? They can come by for one. We can make a six feet di uh, social distancing um, thing going on here. So I can see your face. You can email me, you can call me, you can write me a note, put it in the door. There's many different ways. You okay, can write an old fashioned letter. She will pass those prayer requests on. Yes. To Send them to whomever. Carl and the uh, prayer team as well. Yes, all right. And uh, another thing is we have a lot of information going out via the electronic newsletter. So if you are not on the mailing list for the electronic newsletter, once again, you can call our friendly administrative assistant, Kim. And I will put that down that you want to do that. And you'll be getting those as well. Okay, cool. Um, how else are we communicating? Well, I like this Zoom thing so we can communicate by Zoom. Yes. And you can come by the office. You can call me. Write me a letter. Whatever. Kind of thing. Yeah. In fact, we are doing uh, Zoom meetings for the um, Purple Saturday. So ladies, this is for you. If you uh, haven't gotten in on that yet, it's the first Saturday of the month and we will be meeting by the Zoom app for video calling. And But if you don't like the idea of video calling, you can just use your telephone to call in and all that information um, is provided, a link to access the meeting and a phone number to call in if you prefer to just use audio. And we've had people do that and it works, works just fine. So um, I know the first week of May, the first Saturday of May, um, we are studying. That would be what? Named Pua. Her name was Pua. <laughs> and she. Say that fast five times. That's not a name that many people <laughs> use for their children. No, it's not very common. <laughs> no, it isn't, but it was her name. And she was one of the uh, midwives that um, were taking care of the Hebrew women back in the day when they were told to uh, destroy all the, to kill all the male babies and they refused to do it. So that is the woman we're studying for this uh, coming meeting of Purple Saturday. Oh, Pua. Oh, Pua, yeah. <laughs> so, well, lady. what else do we have? We have um, Bible studies that are forming. Online, I heard. Yes, online That's small so group. Cool. I know, right? We are techie here at Word of Life. <laughs> We're getting there. Once again, however, if you do not uh, get the electronic newsletter, you probably didn't know about those studies forming because the form was in the newsletter. So once again, if you want to sign up, let me know. Call Any way him. you can. <laughs> That's right. Call Kim or leave a message at the church office, whatever. Send her an email. Yes. What's your email address, Kim? It is office at W-O-L-C-M-A dot O-R-G. All right. Thank you. It is on the back of a bulletin if you have an old one. Aha. Uh -huh. True. Yeah, Kim, Kim is, her job has changed. She no longer gets to do the bulletin. Yeah, it's kind of different. I was yeah. telling Carl the other day, it's going to be weird to get back to my normal, what I did before. Your tasks. Just yeah. forget how to make a bulletin. Hey, I hope not. <laughs> Anyway, 
Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Well, I presume you all know that you can catch the service online on the Word of Life YouTube channel. Yep. Um, and also on there are some pastor's studies, which you can also find on the Facebook page. Yep. Yep. It's been doing, Facebook as well. Yeah. First Peter. So he's been doing that. Um, At least we get to see his face more yeah. than once a week. <laughs> I mean, for me, I have to just do, I have to do it because I haven't seen him face to face in three weeks. What if we would like to see your face, Kim? We could go to where you work. You can, please. I'm Other here Wednesday, Friday. I'm here Wednesday, Friday. Here? Sunday afternoon. And what about at your other job? I work at Casey's gas station and I'm there Tuesdays and some weekends. So, so we can see there, there too. There you go. Please, I need to interaction with other people. Perfect. I guess. <laughs> all right. We're just here to help you all kill some time as this countdown timer goes ticking towards the start of the service. Tick, tick. Yes. And it's been nice talking and chatting with you, Kim. Yes. I miss seeing your actual real human face. This yes. is great, but I miss not the it's substance. not the same. No. no. My well, heart we, is aching for my church family. Yeah. We will be back together again sometime. I know this is going to end sooner or later. Hopefully sooner. And then later. <laughs> you're just following the, the uh, guidelines that we're given. Yep. And I want to just remind everyone, our Word Life family, uh, to keep also our international workers in your prayers at all times because they're facing the same crisis that yep. they are facing. The worldwide issue. Yeah, and it, it limits uh, the ministry that they like to be able to do and the contacts, personal contact that they can have with the uh, people in the country where they are serving. So we just want to keep all of them in our prayers as well. Absolutely. We are going to sign off and keep on counting down. Bye, so Word of Life Church. Bye. Miss you guys. Good morning, Word of Life. I'm glad you're able to join us this morning for our stay-at-home service. We have a good service planned for you this morning, so I invite you to sit back and relax. Uh, as you do, just a couple of reminders. First of all, remember to sign up for our electronic newsletter. You can do that by calling the, the church office or sending the church office an email, and we'll get you signed up for that. It's kind of taking the place of our typical Sunday morning bulletin. It lets you know about things that are going on at Word of Life and helps you get involved in some of the activities that are going on online, including uh, online Bible study that's going to be starting up here in the near future. Let me remind you that even though we're facing a, an epidemic right now, God is still in control. God is in control of everything, and He wants to be glorified in our lives, even as we go through this difficult time. You know, springtime is here, and it's a great time to get outside and see uh, nature come to life again. And I want to remind us of that by reading uh, the words of Psalm 19, just the beginning portion of it. Here's what it says. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor there are there words whose voice is not heard. 
their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. There is nothing hidden from its heat. We serve the Lord of all creation, and I invite you to sing with us this morning as we worship Him. setting this morning, but interestingly, we were told that this is actually the original worship setting for Word of Life Church many years ago. Well, as we continue our worship service this morning, I want to share with you that one of the most powerful influences God has used 
in my life and in my faith journey is other faithful disciples. I watch how they live, I listen to how they speak, and I see Christ in them. And I want to see more of Christ in me. We're going to hear in just a minute from one of the faithful disciples in our very own uh, congregation, our own body. Um, Pastor Carl recently put out a post just asking people to share what Jesus is teaching them lately. And Cole is going to do just that. So we're going to switch it over to Cole. He's going to share with us from his beautiful backyard on the Mississippi River. Good morning, Word of Life family. Um, During this time, in response to Pastor Carl's question, uh, this is what I wrote down. And let me just briefly say that uh, it's very easy to write things. Um, It's another thing to commit to them. So here's what I wrote. Um, During this time, Christ is showing me that he desires our affection and attention above all else. Even above very good things like Christian fellowship and family. He's weaning me from the things I put my trust in and showing me more and more the brevity and frailty of this life. I sense that this is a time to get quiet and alone with God to remove all the noise and distractions and reorient my affections to him and to him alone. I'm hopeful, and here's the key, in doing these things, that with his help, um, this is something me and my brothers and sisters in Christ will be able to do in this time and come out on the other end refined, not just for ourselves, but for the benefit of his church and the lost world. And you know, when I wrote, um, I'm hopeful that with his help, we would be able to do these things. It seems like when I write stuff down like this in the past, um, I end up eating my words. And it's because during this time, as little as the COVID has affected me, um, I desired strongly in my heart to do these things. And I wasn't going in that direction. And so you know what happens. By God's grace, um, I can see it now, Um, even in the hardships and in the trials uh, are often His mercy in disguise, like the song says. Well, I was brought to my knees uh, in pain again with something that I've dealt with in the past. And uh, you know what you do when when you're on your knees in pain? The only thing you can do really is pray. And from that moment forward, I spent the week uh, pursuing Christ and um, in Psalm 119 these are a couple of my favorite verses that I look at in times like this whatever it is people are dealing with financial health uh, just too much solitude and free time David said before I was afflicted I went astray but now I've kept your word and uh, later in that psalm he also says it was good that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. So I've looked at it like that, as hard as it's been. Um, today, actually, I had very good news, and uh, it looks like everything is resolved for the most part right now. So. But in light of what I wrote, and uh, Ezekiel came to mind as I was getting ready to do this brief video. And in Ezekiel, he said that... Um, God said that he would make his people clean and that he would cleanse them from all their idols. And maybe that's what's happening now. It's something I perceive in my own life. There's so many things that I put my hope in, whether it's my health, my job, finances, and God's putting all that to the test constantly. And um, if he weren't, doing that, surely I'd probably destroy myself and I think most people would. Um, So I don't want to come out uh, uh, the same after this is all done. I I would hope that's everybody's desire is to come out changed, uh, more in love with Christ, more trusting in Christ. Uh, 
one of my favorite preachers said one of the most dangerous prayers you can pray is God make me more like Jesus because um, God just might pull the rug out from under your life and, um, but I hope that's all of our desires it's my desire but I know it won't happen without difficult things and um, like they say you can't uh, see the stars without the pitch black blackness of the night and so in the same way without difficulties and trials we would not see Christ and eternal life for as uh, glorious as it is and put our hope in him thank you for letting me share this morning uh, I love you guys and uh, let's worship together bye Psalm 63, verses 3 through 7. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. You have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. Revelation 1, 5 through 6. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion 
forever and ever. Amen. transition to Halsey. He's going to do a prayer for the church for us from his home. Good morning, church. My name is Halsey Stocker, and it's my opportunity this morning to pray for the church. I am one of the elders here, and so it's not only an opportunity, but it's a responsibility. In reading Ephesians 6 18 paul writes never stop praying especially for others always pray by the power of the spirit stay alert and keep praying for god's people two of my favorite places to pray are in a boat and on a motorcycle come with me this morning as we go for a short ride and we pray father god we um we come before you this morning 
still in the midst of this pandemic and things are unusual and strange. Uh, help us to, uh, to live in that strangeness with the hope that only you give. Give us perseverance. Uh, this won't last forever, but when it's done, things are going to be different. Help us to embrace that difference and know that you are still and always with us. Father God, um, give us a passion for truth. Uh, we, we get so bombarded today with news and information and so-called facts. Um, let us give us discernment uh, to know what really is a fact and what's just somebody's opinion or somebody's wish. Uh, give us uh, give us a heart for the truth and wisdom to see it. Give us compassion uh, for those who um, have been affected by this virus. Uh, and, and either have been um, ill or those who have been um, been touched by um, by death. Um, help us to reach out to them um, and give them what we have to give, which is you. Uh, Father God, um, give us compassion for others. Father, um, we also ask that um, you give us a, a bit of gentleness and humbleness. Uh, we need to be um, we need to be humble. Um, sometimes, because we know the answer, who is you? Uh, we can be um, less than humble with that. But we know that the only reason we know you is because you made the effort, not because of anything. We are special, so we should have humbleness. Father God, I ask that you would uh, give our government officials wisdom uh, to know what the proper course of action is, and that you would give us obedience to what they say, even if we disagree with it. You put them in positions of authority, and we should... Um, we should remember that. Father God, I pray for our um, brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. Uh, there are people being affected by this virus. Uh, many of them are in places where they don't have the technology that we do. Uh, and I would ask that you would, um, you would bring this virus to a quick end. And especially for believers, um, that you would give us opportunities to reach out to help uh, those who need it. I pray for your your church. Uh, the church is more than a building; it's a people. Um, but we got used to meeting in a building. Help us to um, help us to adjust to new ways and new things, and um, to stay connected as a people, as your people. Father God. Um, Open our ears and hearts to the message that you will have for us today. As the Bible verses are read by Chuck here, um, open our hearts and our minds so that we um, see the value of your word and that you give us both the desire and the ability um, to live as you would have us live. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Word of Life Church. I'm Chuck Holm. I've been asked to read our scripture this morning. Our scripture reading today comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 25. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house. He dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. 
Those who had been scattered preached the word everywhere they went. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Now for some time a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great, and all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed that this man is rightly called the great power of God. <clears throat> they followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized. He followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that, there might, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, <clears throat> and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability so that <clears throat> everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me, so that nothing you have said may happen to me. After they had further proclaimed the word of the Lord and testified about Jesus, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. In a moment, we're going to hear the breaking of the bread of life, the preaching of the word from Pastor Emerson. Will you join me as we pray for that message? Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. We face difficult times. There is uncertainty in life right now about many, many things. For many people are without employment, without a means of income, and unsure exactly what life holds in the near and, and distant future. But we know, Almighty God, that your word is constant, true, that it never falters in anything, and it does the work that you sent it to do. And part of that work is to teach us of you, the Lord Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit. We know, Almighty God, that walking with you, knowing the Lord Jesus, and experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit is what will enable us to go through any storm in life just as it enabled the early church believers to go through the storms that they faced. So now we come to you and plead that you will open our hearts and minds, that you will quicken unto us the word of life, in order that we might become more like you, that our faith in the Lord Jesus and the forgiveness of our sins would be increased, and that our lives would be empowered by your Holy Spirit to do the work of your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Chuck. This is a great passage of Scripture, and it's going to take us a couple of weeks to get through it. Um, so let's dig in. Uh, there's a number of ways that we could look at this passage. We could talk about the Holy Spirit, and that's what we're going to do next week. We're going to be talking about uh, the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But today we're going to take a look particularly at Simon. And what exactly happened here to Simon? And digging into how that might apply to our own lives. This is an important subject uh, because <laughs> well, there are Simons in the world. Simons who have a heart that um, has problems. 
And we want to deal with those problems in our own hearts and be able to connect deeply with the Lord. As we read the passage in Acts, we discover that that there's persecution that has broken out against the church. And instead of being a problem, it actually spreads uh, the gospel message because ordinary people living their ordinary lives couldn't help but talk about Jesus. And so as they left Jerusalem and, and scattered around the Mediterranean world, they talked about Jesus. And Philip was one of these people. Philip was one of the people who had been appointed in Jerusalem to take care of getting food to distributed to the different people in the church, particularly those in, in great need like the widows. And when persecution uh, happened, Philip headed towards Samaria. And as he went, he shared the gospel with people. And it says in Acts chapter 8, um, it says that those who were scattered went about preaching the word. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in the city. And there was Simon. Simon was there. And Simon was somebody who had a great deal of influence because of his magic. Uh, magic is uh, something that we need to get our our understanding of because when you and I think of magic, we we typically think of of sleight of hand. We think of somebody like David Copperfield or Penn and Teller and and the amazing things that they are able to do. Uh, they would both, like all three of them, Penn Teller and David Copperfield, would tell you that that what they're doing is visual trickery. Uh, they're able to distract us and get us to pay attention to things that that distract us from what's really happening. Uh, it's sleight of hand, verbal misdirection, and it amazes people as they try to figure out, how did that happen? But there's also a kind of magic that is in the world today and was in the world in New Testament times where spiritual forces are at work, where demonic powers are at work causing things to happen. And it's in this arena that Simon was most likely an expert. And he used his powers to amaze people. And he was able to create quite a following so that he would be able to uh, have incredible influence in that area. He was known as Simon the Great. Now, when Philip came to town, Philip came preaching the gospel. And as he preached the gospel, uh, he prayed for people, and people who were demonized were set free. People who were lame or paralytic were healed. And Simon was absolutely amazed. In a way, it's kind of like what happened in the Old Testament, back in the book of Exodus, chapter 8. Moses had gone to Pharaoh and, with God's authority, performed signs. Some of Pharaoh's magicians were able to perform exactly the same signs. But finally it got to the point where Pharaoh's magicians could not perform the signs that Moses was performing. And they looked at Pharaoh and said, uh, This is no magic we know. This is nothing less than the power of God himself at work. 
And this is what happened to Simon. Simon saw the things that Philip were do, was doing, and he was amazed. He was amazed by it, and he became a follower. He became a follower of Jesus. That's what it says in verse 12, or verse 11. It says, the crowd was paying attention uh, to Simon for a long time because he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed. And after being baptized, he continued with Philip and seeing the signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now, as Chuck read that passage, you see that, that things didn't go well for Simon. And there's some question as to whether Simon was truly a believer in Jesus or not. And it's important for us to understand that as Philip looked at Simon, Philip saw someone who, who responded to the message of Jesus, someone who seemed to profess belief in God, even to the point that Philip was willing to baptize Simon. He had the outward signs of being a believer. But you know, one of the things Jesus said in his ministry early on is, as his ministry began to be accompanied by signs and wonders, uh, he said he wasn't too trusting of people who believed because of the signs and wonders they saw. It says in John chapter 2, verses 23 through 25, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, Many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them, because he knew all people and needed no one to bear witness about man, for he himself knew what was in man. So Jesus uh, is not as enthusiastic as we might be about someone who comes to faith because they see signs and wonders. They're amazed by the signs and wonders. They, oh, yes, yes, I believe, I believe. Wow, that was incredible. And they're amazed by the power. But have they fallen in love with Jesus? Has Jesus become their great treasure? Has Jesus become the one that they truly worship and adore? Or are they just enamored with the miracles? It's an important question. The apostles hear what has happened. The apostles hear about the gospel coming to Samaria, and so they come and they see that the Holy Spirit has not yet been poured out on anyone, and so they pray. And Simon, at that point, sees that the Holy Spirit is being poured out because the apostles are laying hands on people. And again, we'll talk about that next week. Uh, we're talking about Simon here. And Simon sees this and thinks, oh, I need to know the secret of this. I need to know how to do this. And so he reverts to his old ways and says, I will purchase the ability to do this amazing magic trick of the Holy Spirit coming on people. I want to have this power. And it says in verse 19, Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, 
of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And again, there's, there's some question here about whether Simon was a true believer or not. My tendency is to say that he wasn't a believer, but regardless of how you feel about Simon at this point, I think you will agree with me that there was something incredibly wrong with his heart. And that's what we want to take a look at this morning. We want to take a look at the condition of Simon's heart. Peter tells him that his heart is not right with God that there's something wrong with his relationship with God, something drastically wrong. Peter doesn't see a small thing here. He sees something so egregious that it could exclude him from having any part in what's happening. His heart is not right with God. Even though he had professed Jesus and been baptized and been awed by the miracles, his heart was not right. There was something deeply wrong. Not only that, his heart was filled with wicked intentions. As he saw the Holy Spirit being poured out, his concern was not, how can how can I have the Holy Spirit in my life? No, he wanted this power in order that he himself would be considered great. See, this is what ha happened to Simon. Simon had been the great one in town until Philip came with the message of the gospel. And suddenly Simon wasn't so great anymore. And this is what leads to the next thing we see in terms of Peter's heart. Bitterness had filled his veins. He was bitter. He was bitter of the, uh, the incredible loss that he had experienced. He was now just plain old Simon. And he hated that. And you know, when these types of changes happen in our lives, the enemy can come in and fill our hearts with bitterness. Even today, as we we're experiencing lots of changes in our lifestyle, it's possible for our hearts to become filled with bitterness. We've lost our position, perhaps. We've lost our job, perhaps. Our hearts can become filled with bitterness at the loss of what we once had. Sometimes our hearts become filled with bitterness because we've been hurt by people in the past. And those wounds have become infected. And bitterness is something that is incredibly dangerous to our own spiritual lives. It can keep us from God. As we look at this idea in the scriptures, we find it all the way back in the book of Deuteronomy. As the people are about to enter the promised land, as they're about to drive out the, the wicked people that live in the promised land, uh, it's a land that's filled with idolatry. Uh, Moses has warned them that they must not follow those idols. But in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 18 uh, through 21, uh, it says something very important. He says, Beware, lest there be among you a man or woman or clan or tribe whose heart is turning away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of those nations. Uh, serving an idol rather than the living God. He says, Beware, lest there be among you a root bearing poisonous fruit, poisonous and bitter fruit, uh, 
one who, when he hears the words of this sworn covenant, when he hears the promises of God, when he hears about walking in righteousness, when he hears about walking in fellowship with the Lord, blesses himself in his heart, saying, I shall be safe even though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart. See, we have this incredible ability to justify our own unrighteous behavior, to justify our own feelings of bitterness, anger, resentment, jealousy. We know that deep down there's something not quite right, but but we justify ourselves and we say, no, I'm right in this. My heart be, may be rejecting what God wants for me, but I feel justified in doing it. Moses goes on to say that this will lead to the sweeping away of both the moist and the dry alike. This poison will spread in the camp. This poison of bitterness will infect many people. Moses warns that this type of thing may be beyond forgiveness at all. It's a dangerous and serious thing. And yet, when we're in the grasp of it, we can feel completely justified. We can feel completely right in feeling wrong or feeling like we've lost something great and and we're sore because of it. James warns us, In James chapter 3, verses 13 through 16, Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. If you have this bitter jealousy and selfish ambition, don't boast about it. See, this is where Simon was at. He was filled with ambition. He was filled with jealousy towards Philip and the apostles. He says in James 3, This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there will be disorder and every vile practice. Hmm. No wonder in the book of Hebrews we're told, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. This bitterness is a deadly poison, people. And we need to make sure that it hasn't, hasn't infected our hearts. So this is one of the things that's infecting Simon's heart. But Peter goes on and says, not only are you bitter, but you are in bondage to sin. Sin has wrapped its tentacles around you, and you are wrapped up in sin like a straitjacket. This is one of the reasons some people think that that Simon uh, wasn't a true believer, because true believers have been freed from sin. And yet I, I know some believers who struggle with sin, We're told in Hebrews to to throw off the sin that so easily entangles. And so this serves as a warning to us as believers as well, that, that we need to avoid being like Simon, having the outward appearance of believing, but inside being full of bitterness and wicked intentions and in bondage to sin. Now, Peter tells Simon that he needs to repent. He says, Repent, therefore, of this wickedness, and pray to the Lord 
that if it's possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. Peter calls on Simon to turn around, to give his life fully to Jesus. See, being a follower of Jesus means in part that you acknowledge that Jesus is wise and knows what is best. And so as you follow him, the ups and downs of life aren't quite as high and not quite as low because you realize that everything is passing through the hands of Jesus. Simon should have realized that being a follower of Jesus was infinitely greater than being Simon the Great. That being a lowly Christian serving in obscurity is a higher president or a higher um, position than being president or king. Truly. Simon needed to repent. He needed to have a change of mind. And he needed to enter into a right relationship with God. He needed to begin to pray. He needed to begin to, to connect with the living God in a way that perhaps he never had before. He needed to enter into that deep, vibrant relationship that's only possible through Jesus Christ. Now, what happened to Simon? It's an interesting question. Simon doesn't repent. I mean, according to the passage, what he says is, Peter, you pray to the Lord that what you've said won't happen to me. There's, there's no indication here that, that Simon repents. There's no indication here that Simon himself prays to God, turns to Jesus. So my sense is Simon just doesn't want to have the consequences that, that Peter's talking about happen. Not that he entered into a, a new relationship with Jesus. Now, Simon disappears from the pages of the scriptures. But we know through church history, we know that, that Simon became a thorn in the side of the church. He became a teacher of false doctrine uh, through his charismatic personality, gained a following for a time, and was a constant problem for the church till his followers finally died away. But I'm not that interested in what happened to Simon. I'm more interested in you. I'm more interested in what's going on in your own heart. And are you open to the working of the Holy Spirit in your life? Are you willing to, to say to the Lord, Lord, search my heart. Is there any wicked intention there? Lord, is there any bitterness or jealousy in my heart? Lord, is there any wicked intention that's choking the life out of me? Am I in bondage to sin? If so, Lord, um, I repent. I turn to you and ask that you would release me from these bonds. I ask that you would, would clear the poison of bitterness out of my heart and, and replace it with thanksgiving and joy and love for others. I ask that you would, would change the, the intentions of my heart and make them good and noble and righteous and pure. Lord, I pray that you would be the greatest treasure in my life that truly, if all I have is you, that is enough for me. My satisfaction comes from you. And so I want to invite us in this time uh, to allow the Holy Spirit to come and to minister to us. The worship team is going to lead us in a song um, that speaks of the Holy Spirit coming. 
and sometimes we th- we think about this as as coming into a, a church service or into a group of people but i want to invite us to think about this as the holy spirit taking up residence in our own life and getting rid of the bitterness and the sin and all of the well for lack of a better term gunk that can be poisoning our souls so let's let the worship team lead us I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit Oh, mm-hmm. 
is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. And now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh